Why should somebody collect your art? I think what we first have to look at is the art that you yourself collect and why you collect that art. And that probably will answer your question on why people should collect your fine art photography. Um, now, I do have some art that I collect. Not all of it is photography. In fact, most of it is a more traditional art, such as um, pencil and oil painting. And believe it or not, I also collect books by other photographers. Now, I know that seems kind of kind of strange in a way, but I find that inspiring. Um, but let me show you one piece here really fast. This here is a pencil sketch of a New Orleans street by Don Darcy. Now, what made me want to collect this piece of work, as well as other pieces of work by Don Darcy, is the emotion that his work gives me. This here tells a story. This here reminds me of somewhere I've been and it was a great time. And so that is why that piece really attracted and reached out and grabbed me and why I wanted it. Um, the next piece that um, I have collected is by a oil painter named Leonoid Afrov. Now I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name, but it's right back here. And this is a 30 by 40 oil painting. And the reason I collected this piece and a few others of his is that I love his vibrancy. I love how vibrant this picture is. It inspires me. It makes me feel good. So once again, the reason I collected these two pieces is because of a feeling or an emotion. And I think that's super important to think about when you're looking at your own fine art and asking yourself, well, why would somebody want this? The next thing that I do collect, which I mentioned early on, is photo books. Now here's one by Charlie Waite. Um, Charlie Waite I find an extremely inspiring photographer. I love his style and it resonates with me. So the next question to really ask yourself when it comes to why should people collect your your photography or your art is how you're offering it to the public. Um, what I mean by that is are you offering prints only? Are you offering it on metal or acrylic or canvas? Um, or are you printing them on um, postcards or note cards um, and the reason I bring this up is because people have a perception of value and what I mean by that is they might look at a note card and perceive that it has a lot less of a collectible value than say something on acrylic but they also have this strange perceived value I think too is if I go to a arts and craft fair and I see a picture that is a matted print or something that's on a piece of canvas versus going into a gallery and seeing something that is on acrylic. Something else to think about as well as size. I think there is also a, um, a, a perceived value to size. The bigger, the more expensive it is, the more it's going to be worth. And I don't necessarily think that's entirely true. It's true in the sense that it's bigger and so it costs more to make, so it will cost more money to own. But I think when it comes to perceived value of the art itself, it makes no difference if that image is printed on an eight by 10, matted and framed, or if it's on a piece of acrylic at 30 by 40. The really, the only difference there is the size of it. The reason for buying that, whether it was because it connected with you on a personal level or because you bought it because you as an artist have a perceived value and the person, the collector buying it, thinks that it's gonna go up in resale value, um, does not change. That stays th the same, it's a constant. So when you start thinking about your offerings, also think about the quality of your offering. Like I'm talking museum grade glass, archival inks and paper versus the premium luster or metallic paper from Kodak, which might be a lot cheaper and um, create a larger profit margin for yourself. But as a collector, that has a perceived importance, which is they want to know that this piece is going to last for a while, a long time, but also is made out of the best quality materials that they can buy. Because if they're spending 
a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars on something, they're gonna know what they're talking about. They're gonna know the difference between Kodak Premium Luster Inkjet Paper versus a Honda Mule grade paper. And so when you ask yourself, why should somebody collect my art? Those are the things you need to think about, the things you need to consider, and the things you need to put the extra time, effort, and money into so that when a collector does come up and ask you questions, you can answer those with the answers they're looking for. So what are some of the reasons that your collectors have bought your fine art photography and artwork? Um, I'd be interested in hearing more of your thoughts on whether it had to do with your offerings in terms of size or quality, um, as well as, as just, um, was it because they had a personal connection? Was it a story? Love to hear what you guys have to, to think on this topic. Um, go ahead and, and post your comments below. And I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and please join me for the next cut.